Not sure how to take this and turn it into this to maybe make one of these? Hey friends, in this video, I'm taking you step-by-step -step through my process for taking a physical painting and transforming it into a digital asset that you can use to sell again and again. So what does it mean to digitize your artwork and why should you do it? To digitize means to convert a physical item, in this case, a watercolor painting, into a digital format that can be processed by a computer. Now why, you might ask. You should definitely do this if you want to sell prints of your paintings or create things like greeting cards, bookmarks, t-shirts, mugs, or stickers or any other physical products featuring your own unique artwork. It would be super time consuming to hand paint every single greeting card or painting that you want to sell. Don't expect to make huge profits if that's the way you want to go. But what if you just made a painting that you're super proud of and you'd love to be able to create multiple copies of this painting to sell? You can, and you should. It's called working smart, not hard. <laughs> Understanding how to digitize your work is an essential skill if you want to start an online shop, an Etsy store, or create some other streams of passive income through art sales online. Here are my recommended items that you will need. A computer, of course a scanner or a camera. I use an Epson Perfection V600 scanner and I have a Canon camera that I love for taking photographs of larger works. And you'll also need Photoshop or some other photo editing software. The first step to digitizing your art is to scan or photograph your artwork. If you're using a scanner, it should already be connected to your computer. Here's how I use my Epson V600 to scan my artwork. All right, so here's the screen you see when you pull up your Epson scanner, if you have the same one as me, and if not, no worries. But I just wanted to show you some of the settings that I I use. For the document type, I do reflective. And for the exposure type, I do a photo just because it'll pick up all the colors. And I use 48-bit color. And I actually do set the resolution higher to 600. This allows me to just gather more pixels, more information in the scan so that I can blow up the image a little bit bigger than even the 9 by 12 inch size painting. So then I hit scan. And you'll have some options here for where you want to save your image. So you can choose by hitting browse and decide where you wanna put your image. I'm just gonna put it in the desktop here and then you just hit okay and it's gonna start the scan. This particular scanner can fit artwork up to nine by 12 inches, but sometimes you might have paintings that are larger than this. For large paintings, you can either choose to photograph them or scan them in sections and use Photoshop to just stitch them together. If you're not ready to invest in a scanner, you can take your artwork into a local print shop like Kinko's or FedEx, and they can professionally scan your artwork for you, save it to a thumb drive, and you can get your digital file that way. For photographing your work, it's best to take pictures with natural light. Avoid any glare, harsh or artificial light, or shadows. An outdoor area like a covered patio during the day works really great. Use a tripod to avoid camera shake and try to align the camera straight on so that there is minimal camera warp. Take more shots than you think you need, adjusting the settings so that you have plenty of photos to choose from. Step two is to save your artwork as a JPEG file. If you got your art professionally scanned by someone else, you're good to go. If you took photos of your work, you will need an SD card reader. Plug your camera's SD card into the card reader, plug the reader into your computer's USB drive, and copy the files over to your desktop or hard drive on your computer. I think it's a good idea to create a special folder that houses all of your artwork in an organized way. I have hundreds of files for my Etsy store. I put them in folders separated by subject matter so that I can easily find them. So for example, I have all of my puppy prints in one place and all of my farm animals in another place. You might also want to have a separate folder for your raw unedited scans and photos and then create new folders for your cleaned up and cropped files. Here's a helpful tip too. Never cut and paste your files, just copy and paste. You don't want to risk your computer crashing or something happening while your files are pasting and potentially losing all the files because you cut them instead of copying them and now they're gone. Not that that's ever happened to me before. <laughs> Step three, once you have a scan or photo of your work on your computer, you'll need to use a photo editing software software to clean up the image. Often your scan or your photo will need to be cropped and adjusted so that it's the correct dimension or aspect ratio. Maybe you took a photo of a 16 by 20 inch painting, but sometimes there's a little bit of warp and it's not exact, so you'll need to crop it and adjust it. For something like this on my Etsy store that has a white background, I do take out the paper colored background and make it pure white. You might also need to adjust the brightness levels, color, contrast, and remove any specks of dust that might have been accidentally scanned. Even with 
with a great scanner, there are still occasional dust spots and areas that just need retouching. Once I've scanned my painting, I open it in Photoshop and do any necessary retouches or color corrections. I also make sure all of my files are 300 DPI. This is the standard print size, so this is really important. There are lots of great Photoshop tutorials here on YouTube. This step will most likely require the most learning, biggest learning curve if you're new to this, so take your time and watch lots of tutorials. If you want to isolate your image so that it can be turned into a sticker or put on t-shirts or mugs, etc., you'll need to cut it out of the background and drag and drop it into a transparent background. And then you'll need to save it as a PNG file. So here's my blank canvas that I'm going to put the owl on. And so we're gonna wanna crop out our owl. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. I like to use the shortcut, which is a magic wand, and I just select the background, and you can see how it's outlined the whole owl. And I'll select this area between his legs as well. A couple other little flashing areas I wanna capture. All right, so once you're happy with your selection, I'm going to go to Select Inverse. So now instead of selecting the white space, it's just our owl that's selected. And I'm gonna hit the Move button, or you can hit V on your keyboard. And I'm going to separate this panel so we can see our other one. What we're gonna do is just drag and drop him over to our other canvas that has the transparent background. Shrink him down to size. So there's my isolated owl on a transparent background. And what I'll do is hit Export as PNG. And so this will now be a transparent background and you can now use this file for any of your print products that involve a cutout. Step four, use your digital files to create products to sell. This is the best part. Once you have your digital asset ready to go, the sky's the limit. You can use companies like Printify, Printful, Guten, and others to upload your images and create physical products like t-shirts, mugs, pillows, and so much more. They also have a way for you to actually preview your artwork on those items so you can see what it'll look like when someone purchases it. If you have an Etsy store, you can link your shop to your print partner. And when someone purchases, this print partner will do all the work of fulfilling the order. There's a channel called Wholesale Ted that digs deep into this business model which is called print on demand or drop shipping. I'll leave a link to her channel so you can check that out and learn more. If you decide to sell prints of your art, it's a really good idea to offer multiple sizes in the most popular frame sizes. For example, five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, and 16 by 20 are some of the most popular sizes here in the US. Here's how you crop your image to each size. You'll want to save and label them as separate files. To resize, you're gonna use the crop button and up here is where you can decide what size you want to make it. So I'm going to start by making it a 16 inches by 20 inch image and we always want to set our DPI to 300. That is the standard for print. Now is where you get to decide if you want to maybe crop this corner in a little bit. You can adjust your cropping so that he's more centered in there. That looks pretty good. And now you're going to want to save it in a separate folder and label it with the size it is. You hit export as. Up here's the format. We want it to be a JPEG. So I'm gonna change that from a PNG to a JPEG and I'm gonna hit export. It saved all of my sizing. And again, I'm gonna decide to save it here on my desktop. We'll just call it Little Owl 16 by 20. And then you can go ahead and resize it to maybe let's say 14 inches by 11 inches. Okay, and you don't really have to do much adjusting now that you've got your correct cropping and all of that. You just hit the check mark or hit enter and it resizes it to your 11 by 14 and then you can save it again. So this is how you can crop and adjust and save it to all different sizes. For creating prints, I highly recommend outsourcing to a local or online print company. Set your prices high enough so that you can outsource the printing and the shipping to a company that specializes in those things and they will send out any orders you receive and you'll make a small profit off of each sale without having to do any of the work. Sounds great, right? So that's it in a nutshell. Now it's up to you. Go digitize your art. Go sell it. Have fun. I'll see you in the next video.